In Takanot of Rabbi, of, of Rabbi Yochanan and Zakkai, we mentioned eight, uh, five in the, um, this parak, one in the, um, in the in the previous parak. A lot of them have to do with the transition away from the Mikdash, um, and um, one about a gear who converts nowadays should not set aside the money for the Korban. Also, the transition away from the Mikdash um, is, um, that gets us up to... I'm sorry, six in this parak, one in the previous makes seven, then the gear makes us eight, and the ninth one is now an issue of debate. Of debate. So let's take a look. The Edach. So we're a good bit behind. It's about ten lines before the lines get wide on Lamad Aleph on the bet. Line starts with the word Nehatakala. Here's Reb Shem ben Elezer, Rashba, is the beginning of a line, and the next line after that. Edach, the ninth one, plugs the Rav Papa Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. The debate of Rav Papa and Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. Rav Papa Mer Kerem Revai, it's the issue about the Kerem Revai, about the uh, stuff that grew from the vineyard on the four, in the fourth year. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, Amal Lashon Shoz Zahorit, it's about the red string. Rav Papa Mer Kerem Revai, now we're talking Mishnah. That if you have, you know, the fruit or the, here it's the, the, the fruit of the vine, there's a question whether it's all fruit and specifically grapes um, that grow in the fourth year, um, then you bring them to Yerushalayim and you eat them there. But of course, if you don't want to schlep, you can, conv- you can convert it to money, you can redeem it on money and bring the money to Yerushalayim. You can technically do that even if you're just one foot outside of Yerushalayim. But the rabbis made a takana that if you're within a day's travel, you are not allowed to redeem and bring the money, we want you to be bringing the fruit itself, because part of the whole idea is we want the, the you know, Yerushalayim to be filled with all this new fruit. So, a day's journey on any, you know, on any side of Yerushalayim, you would have to bring it to Yerushalayim. V'zu, um, v'zu and this is the boundary. This is what, this is the cities that are a day away from Yerushalayim. A lot minha, now it can't really be a lot, because a lot a lot more than one day away from Yerushalayim. So anyway, there's a question here, I mean, is it in the north or is it in the south? But it's a different a lot. So anyway, the Akravat Minha Darom, let's say, and Akravat in the south, Lud Mina Marav, um, um, Lud is, and the, or a uh, load, excuse me, is in the west, um, it's the west of Yerushalayim. I said to me, it would seem that to be more than a day. I don't know how, how fast horses go. Um, the Yarday Mina Mizrah, and the Jordan to the east. Okay, so if you're within that, if you're within that circle, you have to bring it to Yerushalayim. Vamar Ula, and Ula said, Vitemi Rabbi Barbar Ula, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Matan, what's the reason? Kidei Latir, Shoka Yerushalayim, or Shuka Yerushalayim, but wrote, in order that the marketplaces of Jerusalem should be adorned with fruit when everybody is bringing the fruit and not just bringing one money. One minute. But Tanya, we turn to Brisa. Kermavai Hayalol Rabbi Eliezer, Bim Yisrach Lud. Rabbi Eliezer had Kermavai to the east of Lud, so the east of Lud is in the direction of Yerushalayim, so we would have to bring the fruit itself. But he did, but Sad Kfar Tevi, by the village of Tevi. Ubikesh Rabbi Eliezer, Lafki Olanim. He didn't want to have to schlep it to Yerushalayim, so he went ahead and he made it, what was about to make it hefker to the poor, let the poor take it and take it to Yerushalayim. I'd rather they take it, then I would have to schlep it. Okay, Amru Lo Tamidah, his student says to him, Rebbe, my master, for Nimu Chavarecha Allah V'hitiru, your colleagues already took a vote and made it permissible. They annulled that takana. Okay, now, Man Chavarecha, who are your colleagues? Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai, that would have been Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai, so that's what Rav Papa claims that the colleagues were Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai, and, um, and that was his takana. Post Chorban, you know, post Chorban, people are not uh, uh, bringing, um, you know, Yerushalayim is destroyed and it's under Roman rule or whatever. The purpose of this takana no longer applies. So again, a acceptance of the post Chorban reality and annulling this takana, there's no need to actually be bringing the fruit itself um, to Yerushalayim. So that is one version, and again, very much of a similar genre. Just wait. The number Yitzchakamer was showing shows the hurry. No, it was something different. It was something actually not post korban, but this is one that actually is going to be identified as pre korban, related to the korbanot of Yom Kippur, to the Seir Lazazel. It was the red string. To tie the the brice up. Originally, they would tie the red string by the opening of the ulam, um, the uh, hallway to the um, to the um, uh, hechal. Um, 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 to the Heichal, they would tie the red string. Um, where, where I lost my place. Mibachutz on the outside. He'll be in if he turned white after the korban was brought. Hayu smichim, everybody would rejoice. Lo, he'll be in if he would not turn white. Hayu atzevim, they would all be anguished. They would feel that their sins weren't atoned for. So they put it on the inside of the doorway. And they would still peek through and look. He'll be in Hayu smichim, lo, he'll be in Hayu atzevim. And if they would turn white, they'd be happy, and if not, they'd be sad. 
Okay, so finally they established Yehu Koshim Lato Chetziav Besel Bechetziav Bein Kronav Shal Sira Mishalech. It would be in a place where the people wouldn't see it. Half of it would be tied to the rock right before they threw the uh, goat over, the other between the horns of the goat itself. Um, uh, so it's interesting because still people wanted to find out why did you have to tie it anywhere? You know, why didn't you just leave it on the horns and nobody will mm -hmm. see it? So presumably they still wanted the information, but they didn't necessarily, I don't know, they wanted to control the information. They didn't want it to get out if it was bad news. Mm -hmm. So anyway, and he's assuming that this final takana was uh, that of Rabbi Yochanan Zakai. So that would be a actual takana of Rabbi Yochanan Zakai during the period of the Beit HaMikdash. So let's take a look. Why didn't he say like Rav Papa, which is the issue about the Karen Ravai, which fits very nicely in the whole theme of the takana of Rabbi Yochanan Zakai. Um, he'll tell you, if you think that those that annul that takana of bringing the fruit to Yerushalayim without redeeming it um, is Rabbi Yochanan Zakai, so Chavei Rav to Rabbi Eliezer Mihavei. They wouldn't have said to Rabbi Eliezer, your colleagues. He wasn't a colleague of Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Ohayahavei. He was a Rebbe. He was an earlier generation. The Edoch, so that's a good point. So what's the response back? No. Kivan to Talmidim Havu, since it was Rabbi Eliezer's students that were telling him that the Gzeira was an old, so Lav Orach Ar Lameimalu, who the Rabbi Rabach, or Rabcha. It would be inappropriate for the students to say to their master, but your Rabbi annulled it. Right? So it's sort of like, you know, bringing their master down. You know, you're somebody who's a bigger authority than you and all So as a way of respect, they said your colleagues and all But really, it was Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai. All right, that's a pretty reasonable explanation. So now let's look at the other idea that it was the red string. For Rav Papa, my time, Rav Nachman, Bar Yitzchak. Why does Rav Papa not say Rav Nachman Yitzchak? So for me, before you get to reasons why it's hard, to, you know, why, why it doesn't make sense to say it at all, I would just say that this Takana does not seem at all to fit in the genre of the Takanot of Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai. It's pre Chorban Mikdash. It doesn't really, you know, there's nothing that really would make it want you to associate this thing with the red string with Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai. But the Gemara actually gives even a more concrete reason why it's why it's very difficult to make that claim. Let's take a look. I'm going to tell you, if it was Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai who did the thing with the red string, since when was there a red string in his days? So apparently Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai lived 120 years. The first 40 years he devoted to business, so he made himself a good parnasa so he could put the money in the bank and then devote the next 80 years to learning and leadership. Mem shana lamad, 40 years he learned Torah, and mem shana limed, 40 years he taught Torah. Okay, and we're going to assume, obviously, that any of his edicts, you know, any of his positions of authority is going to be only once he started teaching, not when he was still in the, mo in, the, in, the in the role of a student. V'tanya, we taught a b'risa, mem shana kodem shenech ravabai, is law he was showing shows the horik mabim. So the string did not turn white for the 40 years leading up to the korban habayis. Um, Ela ma'adim, it stayed red. Okay, the Tanan, and we don't know Mishnah. Mishnah Charva Bayi sees him Rabbi Yochanan Zaka. The Rabbi Yochanan Zaka we know made to come out after the Korban Abayis. So, so meaning, what does that tell you? It tells you the following: If here you have, here you have Korban Abayis. Okay, is at this point here. Okay, and here we know that Rabbi Yochanan Ben Zaka was. Right, was a, was doing his thing after Corbin Abayas. So that means, and for 40 years he was teaching, right? So that goes for 40 years back. So let's just say this was year one. Okay, so this is year 39 BCH before Corbin Abayas. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's so so his role as being as teaching was for 40 years, so at most it got back to year 39 before Chorban Abayas, right? Mm -hmm. But 40 years before Chorban Abayas, year 40 BCH, right, it, it, it was no longer turning white, white, no mm -hmm. longer turning white. And since the Takana speaks about the fact that it sometimes would turn white and sometimes turn red, right, that was the whole point of the Takana, clearly the Takana was, beat, was made sometimes back here. But Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai only started his leadership role at most 39 years beforehand, after it no longer was turning white. And, that, and the Takana was made while it was still sometimes turning white. Okay, so clearly this could not have been Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai's activity his activity was all here. So the Gemara says like this. Um, so, okay. So the Edoch, the response back would be, those 40 years when he was learning, even before he started teaching, 
Tami Yoshev Lifne Rabu Have. He was not just Stam learning on his own. He was there in the presence of his Rebbe, and he was like, you know, involved in the types of, uh, tea, you know, uh, activities that his Rebbe was involved in. The Amr Milsa, and while he was sitting in front of his Rebbe, even though he was a student, he suggested something. He stopped timing. You know, that's a good idea. We should actually change what we're doing with that red string. The Kavi Rabbi Wishmain, they attributed it to him. So it's sort of like when you're a, 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 a professor and you get your graduate students to basically write all of your papers for you and then you get to put your name on it. So here, the Rabbi didn't Sorry. put his name on it. He actually uh, put the uh, graduate <laughs> student's name on it. So Eina <laughs> Tanami basically did do it even, as a, even before his primary years of leadership. But again, it's, a hard, it, it's hard to attribute this time, it really has nothing to do with the normal types of takanot that we associate with Rabbi Yochum and Zaka. Yes. Uh, so the the one for the uh, the caring revive, there were actually two decrees. Yes. And right. the second one basically overturned the first one. The first decree was that yeah, you couldn't redeem it, you had to break it. And then what Rabbi Yochum and Zaka did was that he annulled the fir that first decree. Right. Right. That is correct. Just like before, the decree of not accepting witnesses and then annulling that decree. Yeah. Right, so sometimes what he decreed was to annul a previous decree, particularly a previous decree that was Mikdash related. Yes? Do you think they're associating with Moshe the 120 years and also the eight, Moshe left 80, 80 yeah, so, so, yeah, so you're, it's an excellent point. Years. You're absolutely, yes. You're, you're, I mean, obviously the 120 immediately suggests Moshe. I hadn't stopped for thinking, but you're absolutely correct. He, he that was Moshe as well, right. And Moshe's, Moshe's, you know, Moshe's leadership was his last 40 years, right? And, and maybe you could say that the earlier 40 years, I mean, you don't know in the Torah, but you could sort of see that as his edu the education of Moshe yeah, he, while he was growing and developing. And it's he, an, yeah. He taught Torah when he started teaching. Teaching in the last 40 years. Right. right. You know, it's an excellent point. I mean, it's actually, if you think about it that way, then it's really even, like, radical, because then it says, well, L'chorben Abayis is parallel to leaving Mitzrayim. <laughs> you know, which is, uh, I don't know if the were intending that, but the point still is, you know, one was a good thing, one was a bad thing, obviously, but the point, but the point still is, is that it's like a radical shift in our, you know, in leadership, a radical shift in our religious and, you know, national reality and a type of a leadership that it requires in order to guide us, you know, through that period. So I think that that's, yeah, that is an excellent point. Okay, so now we pick up top of Lamed Ben Amaralev to the Mishnah, back to things specific to Rosh Hashanah. We discussed the Shofar. Now we are going to move to the liturgy. Let's take a look. Say the brachot, the way you do the brachot. Now, the assumption here is we are talking about Musuf, um, because we're going to talk about Malchis, Kornos, and Shofros. But I should mention at the beginning that the Baal HaMa'or understands that you would say Malchi is a Chronos and Shofros in all of the Tfilot of Shimona Esrei. So we are not just talking about Musaf according to the Baal HaMa'or, we're talking about all the Tfilot of Shimona Esrei, but the general assumption, certainly the way we rule, is we're talking about Musaf. Okay? And you would add, oh, well, I have this. Yeah, and, well, this one. Okay. And you add Malchi, Zichronos, and Shofarot. So the question is, where do you add it? Okay, so there's normally, the normal structure is, Right, a vote, right, who wrote, right, who wrote is Machayeni team, a vote is Magain Abraham, we do Shad Hashem, which is El Hakadosh, or Hamelech. Well, obviously, yes, we'll get to that. Okay, then in the normal Shabbat, you would have here to do Shad Hayom, let's say it was just a Yantra, right, or Kadesh, whatever, Hashabbat, or Yisrael, or Hazmanim. Right, and then you have Avoda, which is Ritzay, which relates to the Korbanot, um, Modim. Modim, and and uh, and, and Shav Shemshala. Okay, so whatever. Okay, so that's your normal structure. <coughs> now, if you wanted to put in Malchi Yosef Chonos and Shav, for us, you'd figure out, fine, you put him in, let's say, here, after you do Kedush Yom, maybe before Kedush Yom, and you'd have 10. <coughs> for whatever reason, the Gemara assumes that you're only going to have, or everybody assumes you're only going to have nine brachot, uh, a total of nine, not a total of ten. Right? This is seven. So the question is, which are not where are you going to put them, and which which one are you going to conflate together? Right? So one of these has to be inserted together with one of the three Malchus of Kohanim and Shofros. If you start with the assumption that you only have nine and not ten, you're going to have to combine two. So let's take a look. Say the brachot. The way you do the brachot. Omer avodu gvurodu kedushat Hashem. The kolel malchiot imahem ve'enotokeya. Okay. So the first opinion is you say the malchiot here. Okay. So malchios goes with 
with Kedushat Hashem. We'll discuss why in a minute. Let's just get this down. Without Kiyot. Shofarot v'tokeya, I'm sorry, Zichonot v'tokeya, Shofarot v'tokeya, Vomer avoda v'hoda'a u'birchat kohanim. So this is called birchat kohanim. Excuse me. Let's get the right terms. Birchat kohanim, because you say, obviously, the birchat kohanim there, and that's modim is hoda'a. Okay, anyway. So, divrei, these are the words of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. So he says, you say malchios here, then you say Kiyushan Hayom, and then here you insert Zichronot, Zichronot, and Shofarot. Because that's what Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says. And here he says, you do your Tokay, of course, this doesn't work. Anyway, you do your Tokay, it's okay. You do your Tokay here, here, and here. That's what Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri says. All right, so that's Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Um, Hermolo Rabbi Akiva said to Rabbi Akiva, ah, oh, thank you very much. Said to Rabbi Akiva, Im eno tokeh le malchios, lam hu maskir. Look, the whole point, says Rabbi Akiva, of saying malchios yichonos and shofrot, presumably, is to connect them to the blowing of the shofar. So if you're not going to blow the shofar with the malchios, forget about it. So that's, by the way, an important point, thinking about the relationship of Malchios, Zichonos, and Shofros to the blowing of the Shofar. Are they just a part of Shimona Esrei, and the Shofar is also a part of Shimona Esrei, and sometimes they overlap? If you think about how we do it, you know, the fact is we say the bracha, and then we do the tkiot, and then after we do the tkiot, we actually say, what do we say after we do the tkiot, after we do the bracha? Tekabel barachim yuvratzo, and seider shofro teinu, seider malchio teinu. There's a sense that the tkiot are, you know, sort of accompanying or helping, you know, bring the uh, prayers up to God. There's another way of understanding the relationship. Not that the shofar, not that the blowing is the way of conveying the prayers, but the opposite, which is that the Malchus, Zichronus, and Shofrot are helping to frame and characterize what the, what the Tkiot are all about, give meaning to the Tkiot. We give meaning by the Tkiot, by we say these different themes, and those themes now characterize, become part of what the Tkiot are about. But Rabbi Akiva says one way or the other, Tkiot and Malchus, Zichronus, and Shofrot are intertwined. So I don't understand, besides the fact that you're grouping it there, I can't accept that you don't do Tkiot with one of them. So rather, says Rabbi Akiva, Ela Omer Avodu Gvoru Kedushat Hashem, Vekolo Malchiot Im Kedushat Hayom Vitokeya. So says Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says, no, you do not put Malchiot there. You put, yeah, let's try to move this back over here. Okay, so he's got here Zichronot, Zichronot, and Shofarot. Okay, and that's where, this is Rabbi Yochanan Zuri, the asterisk is with your Tokeya. Rabbi Akiva says, no. What you do is, says Rabbi Akiva, is you say Malchiot here, Zichronot and Shofarot. So Malchiot is connects with Kedushat Hashem. Okay, and yes, you do the three Kedushat Hashem, you do the three Kedushat here, that we are agreeing that you do the three Kedushat, you know, sort of in the middle, but now the Kedushat link to the Malchiot as well. Each of the Kedushat links to Malchiot, Zichronot, and Shofarot. That's what Rabbi Akiva says. Vomer avoda v'hoda'al birchat kohanim. And then you say the three. Now, the Gemara is going to describe, discuss the debate, but before the Gemara discusses the debate, I just want to say a word about how do we pass it? So you're saying, well, of course we pass it like Rabbi Akiva. We know we say Malchiosim Kedusha Hayom. What is the bracha we say by Kedusha? Besides that we actually say the Malchios by the Kedusha Hayom, if you look in your Siddur and your Shemona Esrei, what's the bracha we say? Right? Melech al kol ha'aretz B'Kadosh Yisrael Kadesh What? B'Kadosh Yisrael Right? Yom Hazikaron. Yom Hazikaron. So, and if it's on Shabbat, we add Shabbat. Right. So, but it's Baruch Hashem, right? Right. So, Melech HaKol HaAret is Malchios, and this is, right, normally you just say Mekadesh HaShabbat, right? right? And this is, so this is Malchios, and this is Kedushat Hayom. Okay, so we, well, that's Rebbe Akiva, that's what we do, but here's interesting thing number one. Once this becomes the Chatima for Musaf, Right? Oh, first we say all the Malchios, right? How does the Malchios start? Aleinu, right? Aleinu, whatever, okay? You start the Malchios and you get to there, okay? But once that becomes the Chatima for the Malchios, on Musaf, this becomes the Chatima we have every Shmona Esrei of Rosh Hashanah. Melech HaKol doesn't make sense. Every Chatima for the other Shmona Esrei should be Bukhada Hashem and Kadesh Yisrael Yom Right. Like we say by every other Shabbos in Yanta. But no, this becomes part of the Chatima and that gets taken even in the other Shmona Esrei as well. We do not start with, when it's not the whole Sukim of Malchus. We're talking about the four words Melech HaKol Right. Okay? So that is the Chatima of Kedushat 
of, of, of Malchios, added to the Chatimah of Kedushat Hayom, that is the Psak of Rebbe Akiva, right, and that is part of the Malchios, the whole bracha starts with Aleinu and does all the Psukim, but when we then take the bracha of Kedushat Hayom for other Shemona Esrays, we include within it the Melech HaKol HaAret. That's Even though we don't... the Seder of Rav Amram Gaon, all the earliest things... Yeah, I, I, you'd have to ask somebody else of exactly which Seder reflect which ones. But yes, okay, now... So we, we do that even though we don't blow the shofar in those. Even though we don't blow the, in the other Shemona Esrei. Right, yeah. we just keep the liturgy. Now, I want to make another point, though, because it is not I, so black and white that we ignore the position of Reb Yochan and Ben-Nuri, because how, what happens in the Shemona Esrei after you do Mechayei Meti, what's the next thing you say on a um, on, um, on Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur after Mechayei Meti? Where do you go to? Do you say Rochatasha Mechayei Meti? Then you say Atakadosh Yishim Chakadosh. Now, what do you say? What do you say? Uvechein, Uvechein, Kavod, right? Uvechein, Tei Pach Dicha, right? Uvechein, right? Whoops, Uvechein. Right, 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 Now, what is all of this doing? Right, this is talking about you looking towards the future. Right? So this, I believe, again, I'm not sure, but I believe this is a holdover or a from a Reb Yochanan ben Zaka ben Nuri um, liturgy that had this le as leading into the, you know, the uh, bracha of, of, of Kiddushat Hashem. Now think for a moment, what is the bracha we make, even according to Rebbe Akiva? Right. What's the bracha we make? Right. The bracha is, Baruch Atah Hashem, what's the bracha? HaMelech HaKadosh. So we already have HaMelech HaKadosh here, right? We already have a Chatima here that works as a Malchiot Chatima, and we have actually days. a right. And we have actually a liturgy that precedes it that might well have been the a part of a right. Malchios type of a liturgy. Right. So in the end, what we do is right. Know, when Malchios starts. Right. right. Exactly. So we have Rabbi Yochan Ben Zuri makes this Malchios and the Chatima works, and we keep that Chatima for everything. And we've kept this. We don't have the Psukim, so it doesn't really remain the Malchios. But we definitely have that theme, right. and then we have the Malchios here, and we have that theme, and the Melech Alkalarch also gets retained in the other Shemona essays as well. Okay, so it is, you really wind up having both Rabbi Yochanan and Nuri and Rabbi Akiva, um, even though we wind up really fully passing the Rabbi Akiva, the Malchios occur here, but with the impact that these Chatimot, Right, get preserved, um, you know, in the other Shmona S rays. Yes, way, that, that's a phenomenon in Rizaldi Machlokot, liturgical Machlokot. You have them both. Like Modim. Modim, right. So it's, that's beautifully right. reflective exactly. of that predisposition. Exactly. Okay, so let's take a look at the Gemara. Amalo Rabbi Akiva, so Rabbi Akiva said to him, If you're not going to do tekiahs for the Malchios, why bother saying them at all? So as I said, that reflects a clear understanding of the tight relationship of Malchios, Zichonis, and Shofos to the tekiah, either if one is it is helping the other. It could go either way, but still there's a type relationship. So the Gemara says, Lama hu why are you mentioning it? Rachman amizkir, because the Torah says, say malchim zechon and jovos. We're going to link it to psukim later on. Whether it really believed it was biblical or not, we'll discuss. But either way, it's, there's an obligation to say it. So the Gemara does not buy in to what it seems to be the powerful point of Rabbi Akiva, that these are intimately connected to the tekiot. The Gemara understands that they could exist as an independent liturgy, so it questions Rabbi Akiva's argument that what's the point of doing it without the tekiot? So, Ella Lama, Lama Eser, Lema Tisha. So the Gemara completely takes the punch out of Rabbi Akiva's statement. No, all Rabbi Akiva meant to say is, if you're not going to have the tekiot go with it, you shouldn't say a full ten psukim. We'll see in a minute, you'll say ten psukim. Ella you should say nine psukim. Once you're not having the tekiot with it, you should do something else to indicate they're different. So it becomes a very weak argument. Yeah, if you're not doing the tekiot, why are you doing the full complement of psukim? The real point of Rabbi Akiva, as I said, is much more powerful 
is the idea that these are intimately interconnected, which also raises, you know, the interesting question of what are these different positions about? Number one, right, why would it be that you sort of understand, even though Melech al does not really have so much to do with Mekadesh and Surah, at least on the face of it, you understand that you want these to be like in the middle, right? What is the idea of Rabbi Yochanan and Zuri? Number one is he detaches the Kiyot. Um, from the Malchios, and he pushes this up here. So the one, Mihael HaKadosh, HaMelech HaKadosh, you sort of get it, but what's the idea of sort of, of pushing the Melech in the background and removing it from the Tkiot and removing it from the center and just incorporating it earlier? And I think that one of the ways of understanding this is, you know, a little bit of the question of how we understand the theme of Rosh Hashanah. How much is the theme of Rosh Hashanah to wait the question of, is it like Hayom Harat Olam, the day of creation, or do we think of it more in terms of the Yom Hadin, you know, how much is it a day of, you know, sort of, of announcing God as king, embracing God, Melech HaKola Aretz, you know, you could sort of see that as the Ikar, and the fact that God remembers the creations, is equal note, and whatever, is sort of, is less central than the idea of a Yom of Malchut, and you can even see Shofar Rod as being about Malchut, right, sometimes it's Haril Lifnei HaMelech Hashem. Right? So you could sort of emphasize that, or you could emphasize what I think most happens in Ashkenazi and Litvak shows is the emphasis of a Yom Adin. And the idea of, of Malchus is like, because it's Malchus, that gets us to, because it's the air creation, that gets us to the Icar of the day, which is the fact that we're being judged. Like, but that's like the necessary background to explain why this is a Yom Adin. So I wonder if, you know, to some degree that might be this debate, that by pushing HaMelech HaKadosh up here, it's really decentralizing it from the theme. And the real focus of the day, and you're not even having the tekiot by it, and the real focus of the day is zichonon and shofrot. It's all about a yom hadin, right? And the shofrot then connect to that. Whereas according to Rabbi Akiva, that you have them all in the middle, I think you allow it's like an equal, you know, voice for any one of those themes. And if you wanted to sort of malchios to be seen as a more dominant theme than perhaps zichonot. So I think it is important, again, why he would want to push it earlier and make it like not in the center and also make it not get the, um, the tkiot. So that's Rabbi Yochanan and Zuri as opposed to Rabbi Akiva. That's just obviously speculation. Let's take a look at the Gemara. Tanu Rabbanan, a rabbi's talk. How do you know there's an idea? Now we're going to look at the general structure of Shmon Esrei and then tie it into Rosh Hashanah. How do you know you start with mentioning the Avot? Uh, give to God, you know, uh, the uh, Sons of rams, so rams, the strong ones, are considered to be the avot. Minayin shomim gevurot, the power of God, the might of God. Shenemar havu l'ashem kavod va'oz, honor and strength. Minayin shomim kedushat, kedushot, that you say like ha'el ha'kadosh, or ha'el ha'kadosh, shenemar havu l'ashem kavod shemo, hishach vu l'ashem bahadras kodesh, in the glory of, of, uh, uh, the, of, of the saint, uh, 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 yes, of the saint. This, yes. this is nothing to do with Shana. No, this general. This about the content this, and structure of the Amidah. Exactly, the general structure of Shemona Esrei. Okay, Uminayin, now we get to this. So that's the general Shemona Esrei. Uminayin, Shemona Esrei, is the Kronos we show Frode. How do you know that these are themes of Rosh Hashanah and are reflected in the liturgy? Rabbi Eliezer Omer, the verse says, Shabson zichron trua, a day of rest, a remembrance of lasts. Mikra Kodesh, a holy day. Shabbaton zekdu shatayom. So Shabbaton is, you say, you mentioned Kedush HaDiyom, this is read to understand, since it's describing the day, presumably, therefore, it's going to be reflected in the liturgy to describe the day. So that is Kedush HaDiyom. Zichron, Elu Zichronot. So, right, so you have Kedush HaDiyom and Zichronot. Trua, Elu Shofarot. Notice what we're missing. We're missing Malchiyot, which again reflects a Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, that the center ones are Kedush HaDiyom, Zichronot and Shofarot. Malchios where bracketing for now, okay? Um, Elu Shofarot. Um, Mikra Kodesh, now what's the last Mikra Kodesh? Kacheo Besi Abelacha. That's no longer about the liturgy, that just means don't do Malacha. Okay, but we don't have Malchios. Amalo Rebbe Akiva, Rebbe Akiva says to him, Rebbe Akiva does not seem to be arguing substantively, but he just says, 
why did you put the idea of not doing malacha at the end? You should have started by saying that the word Shabbason means don't do malacha. That's a central idea, you know, and then we'll move on to the issues of the liturgy and what it reflects in terms of other qualities of the day. So you should have first said it was don't do malacha. Ela Shabson, here's how I would read the verse of Rabbi Kiva, Kakeo Basiat Malacha, don't do malacha. Zichron elu zichronot, Tua elu shofraot, Mikra Kodesh, Zo Kedushat Hayom. So he's saying thing, except that he puts Kedushat Hayom at the end, which is not normally what Rabbi Akiva does in the liturgy, right? Rabbi Akiva mm-hmm. admits that the Kedushat Hayom comes earlier. So it's a little bit funny what the whole debate is about. Um, but anyway, but you get the Zichronot and Shofraot from Zichron Tua. Now, Minayin Shomri Malchios, but where does Malchios come in? Tan we done the brace of Rebbe Omer, Ani Hashem Elokechem, Ubachodesh HaShvi'i, Zu Malchios. Okay, so the Pasuk says, right, the Pasuk right before, which talks about, Laniv Lager Tazov Otam, Ani Hashem Elokechem, that's talking about leaving the gifts on Shavuot, and then it says, Ubachodesh HaShvi'i, you know, Mikro Kodesh Yelachem, or Shabson Zichron Tura, Mikro Kodesh, Kamalech HaSavod Alo Ta'asu. So it ties in the Ani Hashem Elokechem, which is understood as Malchus, together with Bachodesh HaShvi'i. Zoom out, Thank you. So, by the way, again, notice this is a perfect Rabbi Yochanan ben Yuri because it is Ani Hashem Elokechem Uvachodesh Hashvi, and it's Shabbason Zichron Truah. So, how does this work? It works Ani Hashem Elokechem Malchios, right? Kedushat Hayom. Um, okay, not Kedushat. Not this. This is sort of like Malchios here. Kedushat Hayom, Shabbaton, Zichronot, and Shofarot. So that is Rabbi Yochan and Menuri. You put the Malchios with Kedushat Hashem, and here Hashem will look at Chem with Rabbi Yochan Then we get to Shabbaton, Zichron, Trua. Kedushat Hayom, Zichronot, Malchios. And again, notice, right, that the Iker definition of the day is Shabbaton, Zichron, Trua. Kedushat Hayom, Zichronot, and, and, and Shofar wrote. The Malchios are like in the background. They're like, before we get to the stuff. But it's like, it's prior to the central characterization of the day. So these psukim work very well with Rabbi Yochanan ben Yuri Drasha. You learn everything out, and you get exactly that order of putting the Malchios earlier, moving them off of center stage. Okay, so that's what, that is the Drasha. Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Yochanan ben Yuri you don't need it from there. Behold, the Pasuk says, lachem right? This is about the Chatzotzrot. I say Lachashte Chatzotzrot's Kesef, right? Which is blasting. And it says, and it says, and they will be for you, Zikaron Lifnei Hashem Elokechem, Ani Hashem Elokechem. So, Lachem Lizikaron, right, is Zichronos, right? And Lifnei Hashem Elokechem, She'ein Tamud Lom Ani Hashem Elokechem, Mal Tamud Lom Ani Hashem Elokechem. Why does it repeat that? Zubnei this is a paradigm. Then the Malchios get, get tied in with the Zichronot. Now that is a Rebbe Akiva approach. Because this approach, right, Shabson Zichron Trua, there's no idea of Malchios in the basic characterization. Whereas, and, and also the idea of Tkiot, you know, if you said that there's an idea of Tkia, right, where do the idea of, what does the idea of Tkia relate to? Trua, it probably relates to these things. Tia does not relate to the Malfios. So this drasha is a Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Whereas according to Rabbi Akiva, if he learns it from the Pasuk of, right, the Chatzot's wrote, right, the Pasuk of the Chatzot's wrote, that's it, where Rashi, by, by the way, Ala Torah emphasizes the drasha of Malfios, Zichronot, and Shofarot. The Pasukim of the Shofarot say, here it is. Um, uh, where am I? Okay. Um, uh, 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 as opposed to here, where this is, you know, pushed earlier, they're all wrapped together, but they're all wrapped together with Tkiyot, with it being about Tkiyot, 
So that's a Rebbe Akiva drasha that learns Malchi Zichonos and Shofros as coming all together and Tkio being associated. As opposed to this drasha, right, where Malchios is pushed earlier and the actual Tkio are not on the Malchios. Yes? Even though it's Chatzotos. right. So uh, you have to, you know, you have to loosely associate. Okay, blasts, right? Same themes, though. Exactly. Okay. So, um, Zebnea, okay. So Rebbe Omer, Rebbe Tanya, we're talking to Brisa. Hechon Omer Likdusha Tayom. Now, where are you going to say the Kedushat Hayom? The, um, you know, the, what do you call it? The, uh, I mean, da, da, da. where are you going to say the, right, Mikadesh Yisrael V'yom Azikaron? Like in our bright, in our mission, I would have framed it as where are you going to do the Malchios? Mm-hmm. You know, with Kedushat Hayom, with Kedushat Hashem. But here it's asking where are you going to do Kedushat Hayom? Tanya, we're talking to Brisa. Rebbe Omer, Ima Malchios Omra. You say it together with Malchios, which is what we do. That's a Rebbe Akiva approach. Mamatinu B'chol Malchom Bir V'yis. Now here's a logic. Normally, right, uh, the day, is mentioned in the fourth bracha. Afghan here will be the fourth bracha. Fine. So that's what we do. We do it with Malchios, which comes right after Hamelech Hakadosh. Fourth bracha, right, comes right after Malchios, but right after Hamelech Hakadosh. Omra. So here's a new idea. You say Kedusha Hayom with the Zichronot. Why? Mamatzinu b'chol makom be'emtsa afkan be'emtsa. You do it in the middle. So here's a new idea, right? So the, the new idea here is is that as opposed to here where you say the you, you push Malchios up, we're assuming like Rebbe Akiva, Malchios Zichron and Shofrot are the are the center stage. Like they are the story of the day. <coughs> They're going to come in the middle. And the only question is, do you put this with Malchios? Because it's normally right after Hamelech Hakadosh, it's right after it's number four, or do you move it down with Zichronot because it's normally in the middle? Okay, in a way you could say, like, what emphasizes that the theme that this is of Kedushat Hayom is it the first thing you mentioned, or is it the fact that it's in the center? But this looks at it differently. We've already discarded Rabbi Yochanan Ben Yuri. We are looking at this as the center of the Shemona Esrei, and the only point is, where do we link the idea of Kedushat Hayom? Now, I should say, by the way, besides the question of the way it's being framed is, okay, but do we, how do we give it its right status? Is its right status as first, or is its right status that it's the middle? But the other important question also is, what do we wind up implicitly saying is a central theme of the day, right? If you say, right, in the Kadesh Yisrael v'hazmanim, v'yom hazikaron, you're saying Malchios, and you're saying Hamelech HaKadosh, and Melech HaKolaretz, but you're actually saying Malchios with Mekadesh Yisrael v'hazmanim, you're making a pretty clear statement that that is like a, 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 if not the central theme of the day. The day of Yom HaZikaron is like Melech HaKolaretz is Malchios, right? Whereas opposed to if you say it with Zichronot, then it's saying a different thing. Central to the theme of the day is the Zichronot. I do see this again as this ongoing tension with what is Rosh Hashanah about. Is it about a Yom HaDin, or is it about a Yom of Malchus? So where you say the bracha of Mekadesh Yisrael, right, could very well, you know, have an important message in terms of which theme is central. The other thing that should be mentioned is the, the, the Nusach is Mekadesh Yisrael, the Yom HaZikaron. Right now, that's not so surprising because obviously the regalim always go together, and then we don't say specifically we say hazmanim, right? Where so yeah, yom kippur we say yom hakippurim. So the fact that we're naming it, but still we're naming it yom hazikaron. You know, for all you know, for all you know, we could have named it as yom truah. Right, we're naming it Yom Hazikaron. So the Yom Hazikaron, right, of of the of the Kedushat Hayom, right, brings together in a way the Malchios with the Zichronot. So the question: Where do you say the Kedushat Hayom? If you were to set it in Zichronot, it would have underscored the central theme that Zichronot is a central theme. We say it in Malchios, which could have made Malchios the entire central theme. But then we say. Yom HaZikaron. Right, exactly. So we've got through saying all of Malchios, but then we label it as Yom HaZikaron. So again, we're sort of keeping the various themes, continuing to keep them alive. Yes. This, could it just simply be that Zohar Gamaliel's position is that Kedusha Hayom always comes in the center? It's yes, I think that is what he's saying. Be'emtza, right. But, but, but in other words, just structurally. Yes. Not... Not the M's middle of these, the M's middle of the whole Shimon right? right? Yes, yes, I, he does say like that. Comes to the center. Yes, he exactly. The center. That's exactly the point. Tied to one theme. Has to put it physically. Right, physically in the center. So I agree. The way the Gemara is framing it is just a question of where does it come? Like right after the first three or middle? But I just think that once you place it in a certain place, it sends a certain message. Like you move it away from the center, it would be to shift the emphasis. Oh, I see. To okay, one right. I see, right. It's right. sort of, you're, you're not, right, you're not, you're, you're just saying, look, we're just doing the standard thing, you know, don't draw any conclusions. Um, okay, so the Gemara says, 
Let's take a look. Um, um, when they sanctify the year in Usha, it's a funny way of describing it. Yes, it's Rosh Hashanah and you sanctify the year, but you know, just to speak about when it was Rosh Hashanah once in Usha, again, never getting away from the theme of Kiddush HaChodesh. So, Rabbi Yochanan and Broke, only friend of Shimon Gamliel, Rabbi Yochanan and Broke went down with, in front of Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Vaasak Rabbi Yochanan and Nuri. And he acted like Rabbi Yochanan and Nuri. So forgetting this debate of the you know middle or whatever, he put on Melech Hakadosh way up here, right? So I'm a little Shimon. So Rabbi Shimon said, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, meaning, Lo you know, came to Yavne. You know, when we were back in Yavne, they never did it that way. <laughs> so they did. So Yom Sheni. Now the second day, which is funny, huh? Yom Sheni. This is the place that they did Kiddush HaChodesh. There yeah. isn't two days of Yantiv, so it'll mean on a, on a later year, but it's not what it sounds like. It's very strange. Anyway, on the second day, Yared Rebbe Chanina ben Nosha Rebbe Yossi Haglil Yivasek Rebbe Akiva. He did like Rebbe Akiva, which was to put, you know, Malchios in the middle, you know, Malchios Chodesh and Shofros after HaMelech HaKadosh. Amr Rebbe Shimon and Gliyos, Rebbe Shimon said, Ah, Kach HaYunogi Miyavne. That's what they used to do. Okay, so the verse says, so by the way, you also see another important theme, which is, he's they're not just hypothetical debates. You know, Dove said before the point, which is when there are different debates, do they both get preserved? But one also imagines these debates in liturgy also started by different practices. You know, there were different traditions, and then the rabbis were trying to decide which one to make authoritative. But it's not like other traditions just disappeared. And often, like in the Cairo Gnese and other places, we find some, you know, alternate traditions in general to different aspects of liturgy that are discussed in the Gemara. Okay, so here you had both aspects of the Rebbe Akiva and Rebbe Yochanan Menzuri. Uh, Okay, the main Russell, the Gemara says, Rebbe Shimon and Leo Rebbe Akiva's really. It sounds like he held like Rebbe Akiva. So, Bahama Rebbe Akiva, Malchios and Kedusha Sayom. So, but but we know in another way he doesn't hold the Rebbe Akiva. Maybe he holds like Rebbe Akiva. I'm already giving away a little bit that Malchios, Yichonis, and Shofar are in the middle, but he debates Rebbe Akiva where you say, uh, where you say, um, you know, Mikadesh Yisrael Vahazikaron. Rebbe Akiva says you say it number four, and he says you say it number five, smack in the middle. So Amalu Reb Shimon Gamliel, uh, um, uh, Amalu. So he said to them. So I'm sorry. Amalu Reb Yiki, Amal Reb Yiki, Machin Kedusha Siyom Amalu. Reb Shimon Gamliel, Amal Kedusha Siyom Ima Zichonos Amalu. You say Kedusha Siyom with the Zichonot. So he doesn't fully pass him like Reb Yekiva. So Amal Reb Yizera Lo Moshe Tokim LeMalchios. No, no, no. You're right. He's not saying a straight psak Reb Yekiva. He holds like Reb Yekiva that Malchios don't get pushed. Pushed away into into Hamelach Hakadosh, they're in the center. You do tkiot with the Malchiot, right? Again, that's all of that is against Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri. We're not discussing now where you say Kedushat Hayom. We're discussing that Malchios comes in the middle and it gets tkiot. Okay, now the Gemara unpacks the other part. The Yom Hasheni Yar Rabbi Chanina. My Sheni. What does it mean on the second day? Ilim Yom Tov Sheni on the second day of Rosh Hashanah, which is what it sounds like. The Meimah Davru Elu. That sounds like they did a. Uh, a um, you know a thirty day month of Elul. So the Gemara imagines it could have been in Usha that they had two days, and the first day maybe was Besafek because they didn't know. And in the end, they made the thirty first day Rosh Hashanah, and that would be a way in which even in the place where you do Kiddush Hachodesh, you could have two days if it wound up that the previous month was a thirty day one. So you started that day not knowing. So the Gemara says one minute. But we said that that never really happened. Although you might remember earlier, we actually did say two times when it did happen. Happen, but okay, so we don't buy that that they really made a two day Rosh Hashanah. Um, um, it means on a different day in a different year, it doesn't mean the next day of Rosh Hashanah. All right, it didn't exactly sound that way, but fine. So here we have this very central debate of again whether Malchios gets pushed off. Pushed earlier and bracketed and no tkiot, sort of taking away from central stage, right? And again, in these psukim, you do not really have the theme of malchios. To when you do, it's pushed earlier, or whether malchios is central, which you get from the psukim of you know of the chatzot's rote, and therefore it's in the center and it gets the tkiot. A related question is kedushat ayom. Does it come fourth or middle? That could just be a technical question of what is its right place. But also, it might have an implication on the theme of which one you're centering on in terms of the nature of the day. Um, and as I said, the fact that we do it in the fourth, but we say Melchizedek, and then we say Yom Hazikaron, <laughs> brings Zichronot back, you know, sort of gives it equal weight. And then the, what we're left with in terms of our liturgy is that the bracha of Melech HaKadosh and in the Bechains reflects really a whole Malchus theme going on here, Rabbi Yochanan ben Yuri, which gets retained. And the fact that the Chatimah is Melech HaKol Aret Mekadesh Yisrael is the Malchus Chatimah, 
that gets retained even in the non Musaf Shmona essay, even when you're not saying Malchios. Okay, so it's a little crash course in how we get to our our you know Shmona essay. And now we get to the direct discussion of the Psukim. Let's take a look. You have to have ten psukim of each. If you want to say three each, it's fine. Okay, we'll see what three each means in tomorrow. So, honey, I said, Malchios, can I get me? What do these ten Malchios represent? So, I'm a Rebbe or I'm a Rebbe Levi. Can I get a Sarah Hilim, Shamar David, Besefer Tilim? The ten Hallels. You know, halaluth that it says in Tehillim. So, Mar says, Halu in Tuva Hava. Wait a minute, there's tons of times it says Halalu in Tehillim. No, Hanech Tehsim Behu Halalu Bitkefa Shofar. If you count the ones in that pair of Tehillim of Halalu Bitkefa Shofar, which is about Shofar, the Shofar, right, you'll get ten. Halu Bitkefa Shofar, Halu Bimini Gav, Halu Bitkefa Shama, Halu Bitkefa Tura, Halu Bitkefa, right? So, you count the Halu, right, Halu Bitkefa, etc., you will get ten. So, that's one idea of ten. Praises. Now, of course, that can sort of focus on the idea of Malchus, right, of God as king, you know, ways of praising God. Does that idea of the ten correspond to Zichronot and Shofrot? Not exactly. So in the uh, Yerushalmi, right, Halubitil Seitura, right, so that, okay, fine. So in the Yerushalmi, they give a different correspondence to the ten of Zichronot and Shofrot. I think the Maharsha quotes it. Hold on. Not, not just this gen just generic one of Halubu. Um... Take a look. There's a Yoshami downstairs. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. Um, no, I'm not seeing it. Okay. I might be misremembering. Okay. Let's keep on going. Um, okay. So, my says like this. Um, so going back to this Malchus theme, Malchus in the sense of what do you do for a king? So first you praise a king, but also the sense of God as a Melech today is specifically connected to create as the creation of the world. Oh, so the Gemara says, Hainihu um, Vayomer. So what's the ten Ma'amarot? The ten times it says Vayomer, but it doesn't say Vayomer. To Breishit, why? Teishahave. Because the Vayomer is in Breishit only nine. There aren't ten. So the Gemara says, no. Breishit nami Ma'amarhu. The word Breishit is also a divine utterance. Shechsiv Bidvar Hashem Shamayim Nasu. With the word of God, the heavens were created. So when it says Breishit, Bara Lokim Eta Shamayim Eta Aretz, there was some utterance that caused the creation of Shemaim Baaretz before the Vayomer. So this gets back to the whole debate of if you read the first Pasuk as leading up to when God was creating, God said by, you know, the or, or in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And if you read it that way, then there was an act of creation of heaven and earth, which is implied in the word Breshit, really implied in the word Bara, anyway, but that's somehow seen as the initial divine utterance. The so Marsha goes into great length explaining why it wouldn't have the word of Vayomer, that Breshit is more, is more Yesh Mayayin as opposed to Vayomer. Yomer, which is yesh mayesh. Anyway, these types of differences. What does Reishit mean? I think it's just simply saying, with Reishit, the word Reishit, God created... So that's the question. Does it just yeah. mean, right, so that's a good question. When it says, Breshis Nami Mama, does it just mean that there was an utterance? It's alluding to the fact that there was an utterance? Or, the or that the word Breshit itself was the first word? The first, right. Reishit. Right. 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 Well, with, oh, I see. Be Reishit. Right. right. That's the Rashi versus Rambam. Right, right. Okay. Um, all right, <laughs> so... <laughs> right, and so you mean like it's Mosif on something. Right, it's, it's adding on something, right. Okay, good. So it says, um, okay. Rabbi Yolanda Nuri Omar, Imam HaShol HaShol Mikul and Yatsa, if you say three of each, you're Yotze. Ibailu, Hei Chiktani. What does he say? Shol HaShol 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 In the end, we're going to say that you have you know, Torah and Vim and Suvim, and then you end with one from Torah. So when he says three of each, does he mean three of Torah, three of Nevim, three of Suvim? And then Davi Tisha, Vika Benai Ochada, which equals nine, and they're really just debating nine versus ten. The Tanakam says ten, he says, no, nah, three Torah, three Nevim, three Suvim, that's enough. Don't go, don't, I'll take Zim. Nine is enough, okay? That's one way. Oh, the Omar may be saying, no. When he says three of each, he doesn't mean three Torah, three Nevi'im, three Ksuvim. He means three Malchios, three Vichronos, and three Shofaros. One of each of, of Torah, Nevi'im, Ksuvim. The Avon Shlolosh, that was three. He could be now two, and there's a major debate. Three verses ten. Tashma, come in here, Titania. Right? 
Kinegat Shiva Rikiim. So here it says Bidyevid, you can do seven. Interesting seven. How would that get divided between Tardivim and Suvim? Maybe two of each with one final one. Anyway, ten. But Bidyevid seven per Bidyevid seven is enough. The Bill Menurio Mer Hapokas will Yifros Mishava. You, you shouldn't say less than seven. The Amar Shalosh, but if you said three, Nikolan Yatsa, Kenega Tarnavim, Muksuvim. So you see clearly we're not talking about three Torah, three Navim, etc. We're talking about the whole unit. Don't do less than ten, don't do less than seven. And he says even up to three, you'd still, even as little as three, you'd still be Yotze. Okay. Some say Kohen Levi Yisrael to include the entire Jewish people. Again, I don't know what to do with these Kenegets. Which is quite fascinating. But the if you just say one plus of each Yotze, we're going to revisit that later when the Gemara says a, a, a strange thing, which is which is uh, even if you just say B'Torasko Kosov Lemur in your Yotze, without even saying any Psukim. But for now we're saying we rule like Rabbi Yochum and Nuri that at least B'Dyevet three is enough. Now we get to choosing the Psukim. Ein maskirin, okay, zichron malchus v'shofar, that's our girsa. Others have the go, so zich malchus zof zichronos v'shofar wrote, okay, right, to get the order right. Anyway, shel puranot. You do not say the ones that refer to, like, uh, you know, bad uh, things happening to people. Matchil um, b'Torah, you state Torah first, mashlim b'Navi, and then you say Navi, and then and then you and then you end with Navi. So it's Torah suvim Navi. If Yosi Yomim Hishlim b'Torah Yatsa, you could end if you end with Torah your Yotze. Now we know we Dafka do make the tenth one Torah, mm -hmm. so the Gemara will reframe that. I want to say just one word on what this weird order is of Torah suvim Navi, right? Normally we do Torah Navi and suvim. So some of the Yishonim try to say, well. We're trying to go up in order, so we do Ksuvim and Nevi'im, but you really can't have to start with Torah, so that's through the order mm -hmm. off. Anyway, the best explanation I heard, and I'm trying to remember who said it, but is that it's in order to allow the liturgy to progress from past, present, to future. Because if you think about it, basically the Psukim from Ksuvim are from Tehillim, are from David HaMelech. Mm -hmm. And therefore, so number one, some people want to say chronologically, mm -hmm. Tehillim was written before Nevi'im. I mean, most of the Nevi'im we quote from our post of the okay. That's the chron chronology of it being written. But in terms of how it functions liturgically, right, in the Tefillah, right, the Psukim we quote from the Torah look back. The Psukim we quote from the Tehillim talk about praising God. So they talk about our presence, in our present, right? How the themes of Malchus, Yichonos, and Shofros play out in our pre in the present. And the Nevi'im look, tend to look towards the Messianic future. So it's about how we are bringing bringing those themes of Malchim, Yitzchonos, and Shofros into our backwards looking, into our present, and towards the future. I think that that's the, really the best explanation for that. Okay, so now the Gemara is going to discuss these, the choosing and which psukim you can and cannot use. So now we're going to look for psukim of Puraniot, of uh, sort of, you know, of bad things that are not supposed to be used. Malchiot Kigon, what would be an example of a bad pasuk, bad pasuk, of a pasuk that would be inappropriate? Yeah, that's not a pasuk you want to be saying on Rosh Hashanah, wow. right? With an outstretched hand and Pouring forth wrath, I will be God, I will be king upon you. Okay, the Avra Gav Zamar of Nachman. Koki I ritka lirta kucha brichu alan vilifrikunan. So God should have all this anger on us as long as eventually he redeems us. Let him get his anger out on us, but ultimately it should lead to a gi'ula. Nevertheless, Kivan de Baritcha Amor, since it's been said in anger and in heat, it's Kura Ritcha Bere Shatalomat Kirina. We do not want to evoke or to mem remember, you know, mention that type of anger that God has on us, on Rosh Hashanah. Zikaron, what would be Zichronot of Puraniot? So Kigon Vayiskor Ki Basar Hema. And God remembered that they were flesh, and that could be a good thing, but the end of the Pasuk is. You have the end of the Pasuk quoted there? It's Psalm 78, verse 39. So the later Psuki make it clear that it's about, obviously, about doing bad things. Okay, shofar. What's a shofar? Pranios. Ki go on tikuba shofar begiv a. Both the shofar in give a. What's the end of the pasuk? You have it there. I don't have it. So share chapter five, verse eight. Yeah. I thought some of those gemaras have the uh, what do you call it? <coughs> the full, right, full pasuk quoted on the side. Shofar begiv a. Achatot. Yeah, achatot. How do you think having achatot? Okay, well, that's not clear what's so, what's so bad about that. But presumably, we can assume, I have to admit, I did not check. 
It's the destruction of Binyamin. Okay. In the context, it's not a good thing. All right. So that would be an example of Shofarot of, of, of Puraniyot. Okay. Uh, now, now, if you want to mention bad things happening to the non-Jews, Omer, you can. Now, this is an important question about, on the one hand, it's a day of universal judgment, of, you know, God, King, Melech, Kol Haaretz, and we're going to mention that in a minute. You have to emphasize King over the whole world. Kol Ba'eolam Ovim Lefanav, right? So maybe we should, you know, hope for the good of the whole world. How much, you know, does it become focused as a Jewish, you know, Yom Hadin, and, a, uh, and so on, and uh, is interesting. So here it says that you're allowed, you can say that. Um, um, I mean, it is acknowledging that's a Yom Adin. You just want bad things to happen to them. <laughs> um, like it says, Hashem Alach Yirgizu Amin. The nations will tremble. Kugon, and for example, Hashem Alach Olam Va'ed. Of Du Goyim Yatso. The nations will be, will be driven from his land. Zikaron kigon zachor Hashem livnei Adom as Yom Yerushalayim Hamriya Ruah Ru. I bring the punishment to the children of Adom that caused the destruction of the temple. Shofar kigon v'Hashem elokim b'shofar yitakav alach b'saros teiman b'ksiv Hashem tzorkos yagain alehem. So God protect the Jewish people, right, and bring this sort of bad stuff on the non-Jews. So that it says is actually acceptable. And again, that's like a little, you know, uh, a little discordant for those that want to really emphasize the complete sort of positive universalist theme. Ein maskirin zikaron shel Yahid, now you do not mention God remembering individuals. Again, this is a national Yom day. We're supposed to be thinking of ourselves. Obviously, when you pray, you know, for a lot of people, Rosh Hashanah is very much focused on, you know, you know, yourself, your family, you know, your own shuva. But here it's emphasizing that no, the you know, this is really the, the themes in the Shimon Esrei, like always the themes in the Shimon Esrei are communal and national. So you do not mention that of an individual. Vafiulatova, even a positive one. Go in Zachrani Hashem Birtzon Amecha, Okay, now of course we do sort of say, by God remember Noah, okay, but we're going to get to that. When individuals are remembered, but it's ultimately a way of remembering the whole world, that's a little <laughs> bit different. So let's just read a little bit more about this. Piktono, Tarehein Kizichronos. When it says God Pakad, that's like Zichrono. Kigon Vashem Pakad et Sarab. Kon Pakod Pakad et Yetchem. Giver of Yosi, Reb Yosi. Reb Yudomer, Einam Kizichronos. No, it has to be it has to be Zichrono, not Pakad. Now, why? So the Mosha points out it's not just a different terminology for the same word, there's a difference. To be Zocher means to constantly remember, okay? Or to have sort of ongoing in mind. To be Pokad means to sort of, you know, to remember at a particular time. Hashem pakad et Like it's in the calendar, you know, that you remember at this time to do something. You know, to or it's momentary as opposed to zichronot. Uh, it could be zichronot is at a moment, right? When it says that they called out to God in Mitzrayim, what does it say? Vayishma elokim es tzakasam vayizkor elokim et brito. But pakad specifically means, he says, like to have a fixed time to remember to do something like at that time. You know, or, you know, something that was said you're going to do. Whereas opposed to zichronot is more constant. So you don't say pakad. You speak about Zichrono. Um, to go, okay, the, um, um, the Reb Yossi, let's just read one more line of the Gemara. Reb Yossi, he nami de piktono, tarein ke zichrono, even if pakad counts, Hashem pakad et sarah pikado de yachidu. That's an individual. It's not, it's just sarah. So Gemara says now, kiva de asurabi nina, since all of the, many came from her, you know, a lot of people, many people came from her. Okay, <laughs> Kla Yisrael came all from her. To Rabin Damya, it's like the Rabin. Okay, so we will pick up from this and continue to look at the various pieces tomorrow. Sure. All right.